that's all I know in both languages. <laughs> I want to uh, just personal note. Uh, I have been attending these events for two years. And I have seen the growth, not just in terms of numbers, but intensity, the support, the crowds, the leadership. Uh, it's my honor to be with so many distinguished political leaders from Eastern Europe, Western Europe, the United States, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, presidential candidates, Madam uh, Rajabi. I, I also note the, the enormous strength of your movement and how stronger it has become in the last two years and the intensity strength of the crowds and they have noticed that the women are the loudest and most passionate. <laughs> I want to make six points um, because the issues relating to humanitarian factors and Camp Liberty and Camp Ashraf there are more experts that are able to speak about those conditions and the role of the United Nations. And, and I think we need to listen to that humanitarian component in particular. I want to thank Colonel West Martin who keeps us all every day informed, almost every day. Ready to 
halt its uranium enrichment, and it's ready to enter into negotiations with European countries and the United States. We hear this constantly, constantly. But then nothing ever happens. There's always an excuse. It's either the International Atomic Energy Agency or another international group that sees the reality of what Iran is doing, and that is its relentless drive to acquire nuclear weapons. And the Western world did not allow that to happen. Number four, policies on Iran in America, in Europe. More concessions, more dialogue is not the answer. And you're talking to somebody that feels very strongly that at least America and others must deal with regimes that are different than we are. But more concessions with Iran are not the solution. I am of the view that sanctions are working. I do believe so. They're biting. Because Iran imports its food, its gasoline. And you can see the effect of the sanctions working because more countries are participating. The oil sanctions from the EU, the banking sanctions from other countries, a very strong united effort that slowly, slowly is bearing fruit. And I know there's differences, especially in this panel, of how to achieve that regime change. But I think one thing is sure that the best way to push for regime change is to unify and support democratic movements like the MPK. Point of view 
of others. It is a movement that most importantly respects women. And if you look at the Middle East, if you look at the Arab Spring, if you look at Africa, if you look at Afghanistan, the countries that have the most trouble, the ones that are considered the most repressive, but eventually fall, are those that violate the rights of women. And what we see here in this movement is a solid identification and solid support for the importance of the respect for women. So after two years, after my coming here to this same hall and seeing the growth of the movement, seeing the MEK delisted, seeing how louder you have become in your passion, because I think you think and know that the end is near and that victory will be achieved. Well, he's done or how bad he's done. What we are going to say is 
when you are married to a German ambassador to Iraq, then you have a conflict inside your family about what the pr principal job that you're supposed to be doing is. And we need someone with no conflicts to work hard to defuse this situation. The United Nations has been too slow. And we, this time, if the United Nations is too slow, there will be people who pay with their lives. That is not acceptable. And if that happens, I may join those people on the other side of the aisle who believe the United Nations appropriations ought to be cut if they can't do their job. person, but I will not stand for innocent people losing their lives because of bureaucratic incompetency. That I will not stand for, and neither should any American, any Iranian, or anybody else in the world. People will die. Bureaucracy <laughs> is not an excuse for murder, and murder is on the minds of the Iraqi government and the Iranian government, and we need to do better. Finally, let me say this. The NK has had its problems in the past. The truth of the matter is that the NK is also the best organized opposition, has renounced violence long ago, stands for the same things that the United States now stands for, and we need to get past the past. We need to understand that this is the legitimate democratic opposition. There are other groups. We will help them, too. As Ambassador Richardson said, the regime in Iran represents the greatest danger on the face of the earth. This is a regime that supports terrorism everywhere. Thousands of Americans have died in the hands of this regime, not to mention tens of thousands of others and hundreds of thousands of Iranians. And I say, extraordinary quote that Madame Rajini used from the mother of the Iranian blogger who was murdered, that he was a lion and that you are cowards. But I will add something. For each Iranian blogger, just as for every son and daughter of the revolution that took place over 200 years ago in my country, for each one that's murdered by the Iranian secret police, there will be five more, and then five more after that, until Iran is free. Thank you very much.